Hey there, friends and followers. Today's informative video is none other than the market report for the month of September. As always, with new numbers brings new suggestions on where we're going or where we may in fact be ending up. Stick around to catch the numbers and decide for yourself. So yes, as always, welcome back. So with a sweet breath of relief per the last month's market update, we saw the beginning of some balance being brought back to the market due to an increase of not only inventory, but the reluctance of a lot of buyers who no longer wish to engage in the competition of offer situations that include both bidding wars and the waiving of certain contract contingencies. With the forecast already on the horizon for a more balance and regulation being brought back to the residential real estate market, things like steady purchase applications being received, a slight uptick in home mortgage rates, and a strong resale market in place with the need still for housing in general for the mass population, we expect things to remain steady and perhaps even see a buyer friendly market as we close out this year and make our way into next. This of all course stemming from the numbers. Speaking of which, let's go over them now. Looking at the numbers for single family residences here in the Ocala Marion County area, starting none other than with closed sales. In the month of September, we saw 686 closed units versus that of August. 740 closed homes. Uh, this is still, of course, a 10% increase over that of which we saw in September 2020, coming in at only 621 closed sales. Sales volume as a whole, we did see fall shy as well, coming in at $208 million in the Ocala Marion County area versus that of August, it's $246 million. Average sale price, we did see fall shy as well, coming in at $303,000 versus that of the previous month's $333,000. Median time to contract upon going on the market to getting your home under contract, we did see come up a slight hair, uh, starting at uh, nine days in August and then jumping up to 11 days in the month of September. Average list price received for a home on the market, we did see at a steady 100% uh, as the transition went from August to September. And jumping on over into the inventory side of things, uh, pending sales, we did see uh, fall just shy to 773 pending homes versus that of August, 783. New listings, we did see fall shy as well, 757 new homes for sale versus that of 834 in the month of August. And active inventory as a whole, we did see come in just shy as well, 921 homes for sale versus that of 980 in the month of August. This, of course, still being a 24% decrease over that of which we saw in September 2020, coming in at 1,216 homes for sale. Now, lastly, the uh, MSI number or the month supply of inventory with that 5.5 number being the balance benchmark. Uh, we did see fall just shy as well. Uh, 1.5 month supply of inventory in August, transitioning over to September 1.4 month supply of inventory. So even though we didn't see a strong impact in some of those categories, one thing I would like to point out is the fact that the average sale price we did see come down as well as an increase in the time to contract. Now, these two metrics specifically, while even though small provide the evidence that indicate a shift is coming around and that buyers are beginning to allow homes to sit on the market that they may not feel are priced accordingly. Now, let's turn our focus to some other marketplace news brought to you none other than the fine folks over at FloridaRealtors.org. Up first, the U.S. government announces opening the land border to our neighbors in the Great White North starting November 8th. Now, despite some light travel arrangements already in place for essential workers back and forth from Canada, the Canadian government is finally lifting the global advantage advisory prohibiting travel and non-essential commutes between the two countries. The travel advisory, as you may remember, was put into place in March of 2020 as the COVID-19 pandemic spread around the world and was the culprit of thwarting certain businesses that relied heavily on international travel and logistics. With growing confidence in the COVID-19 vaccinations and safety precautions that have been put into place, the travel industry specifically is already seeing a significant uptake in reservations with the desire for Canadian residents to have the opportunity to travel back down here to the States. Now, it's unsure how this will directly affect the real estate market, but with the opportunity to be able to travel, we can expect this to not only boost job force strengthening, as well as making things easier for those that have already been utilizing this ability. Next up, Zillow plans to put its iBuyer program on hold until further announcement into 2022. In a statement just released a couple weeks ago, Zillow's iBuyer program, much like the versions offered by Open Door and Redfin, is being placed on hold due to not having the operational capacity to work through the transactions and renovations required to resell the homes in which they've acquired. For those unfamiliar with the program, it is an option for home sellers to in fact sell for a quick and easy sale, but ultimately exchanging the amount of the price point in which they sell for. Essentially, the program uses certain algorithms to figure out what to pay for a home, 
acquire it through investor types labeled as iBuyers, and in turn then resell it. Zillow, who is said to be lacking enough ground workers and vendors, is also catching static from the iBuyers who are, quote, asking for too much and thus leaving Zillow without making much of a profit at all in the current market as it stands. With the talk of rising interest rates, which will directly affect financing costs, this makes for a double whammy on the business model that is the iBuyer, specifically for Zillow, who is most likely recalibrating their approach as it adjusts to the shifting of the marketplace. And lastly, a recent study finds that more millennials are purchasing homes and condos with roommates, friends, and significant others. Now, on a recent data study done, it finds that the number of co-buyers with different last names has surged some 771% between the years of 2014 and 2021. Now, it's no surprise that affording a home isn't always easy or cheap, which has led individuals who may have been renting and wanting more space, especially during the pandemic, to take a glance over at their roommate and suggest the idea of going in on a purchase together. Besides the high cost to purchase a home, many first-time buyers are also having to deal with some sort of student debt, which can also prevent the home buying process. According to a report done from the National Association of Realtors, it states that half of the potential home buyers surveyed had mentioned that they haven't been able to purchase yet simply because of student debt. Millennials are most likely to point out that student debt is the top contributor for delaying the home ownership process. Some individuals, however, are still finding a way, if not co-buying with a friend or a lover, are most likely applying for a mortgage with a family member in hopes to boost their credit rating. Well, there you have it, friends. That has been some real estate news and the market update for single-family homes here in the Ocala Marion County area for the month of September 2021. As always, if I can never uh, elaborate on any of this information contained in, or if you have any questions pertaining to, I strongly encourage you to drop a comment below or reach out by call, text, or email. I'd love to be of assistance however possible. Slide over to the page to stay up to date with great residential real estate information like this, as well as everything in the Ocala Marion County area. As always, thanks for tuning in and checking out the videos. We'll catch you guys on the next.